Hello everybody, my name is Nathan, and last week I was speaking to some other YouTubers, and the conversation went on to what microphones we were all using, and it was actually quite an interesting discussion. So I thought today I'd share my thoughts on the mics I've used during my time on YouTube, and provide some audio samples for each mic, and hopefully that'll give some helpful information to anyone just starting out on YouTube, and wondering what microphone to buy, and maybe even some slightly more seasoned YouTubers too. And for everyone else, I hope there's some interesting stuff in here for you as well. So, let's start off with my first real YouTube microphone, the Blue Snowball, and that's what you're hearing me through right now. As you can probably tell, it's nothing like the quality of my main microphone that I use nowadays, but for the price, it does the job. And what you're hearing right now is completely without post-processing. If we do a little bit of audio trickery with this microphone now, you should be able to hear that things get quite a bit nicer. Alongside decent sound quality, the USB connection makes use of the microphone extremely easy, and the cardioid pattern of the microphone makes it perfect for recording videos with one person and blocking out some of the background noise around the room. All of that added together and coming in at around £45 makes the Blue Snowball a solid entry-level microphone. Moving on from the Snowball, you're now hearing me through the Razer Siren, without any processing again, and it's a fairly sizeable jump from the Blue Snowball, both in terms of quality and unfortunately in terms of price, with the Siren retailing for around £130. You do get considerably more features for your money though, with the Siren sporting four different pickup patterns, which are omnidirectional, stereo, bidirectional, and cardioid, which is the one that most people will want to use. It also has an integrated audio jack and volume controls, which allow the user to monitor their own voice during recording, making the Siren great for streamers. And if we put some post-processing on it now, you'll hear that it sounds pretty damn good. Again, it's a USB mic, which makes it easy to use, but it does have a pretty big usability drawback, which is that it's very heavy, meaning that cheaper mic arms will have trouble supporting it. And that fact, coupled with my specific Siren developing a slight crackle every now and again, is the reason that I was forced to drop it as my main mic. Another little note is that the USB connection at the bottom of the microphone isn't great, and if you like to plug and unplug quite a lot, it might break after not that long. Now, oddly enough, when I got my next microphone after the Siren, I actually went for a cheaper option in the form of the Audio-Technica AT2020, or at least I would have had I not bought two of them. So right now you're hearing me through one of these, completely unprocessed, and if I quickly switch over to the process version now, I'll explain why I got two, and my thoughts on them. Alright, so I bought two of these, the XLR version by the way, because I wanted to be able to record videos with my friend George, who has appeared in a number of the videos on the channel, and I wanted him to have his own mic, rather than sharing one with me. In order to do that though, I also had to buy an audio interface, so I went for the Xenix Q1002 USB, which is a pretty awesome bit of kit, but with the mics coming in at £85 each, and the interface costing about £70 even today, it's not exactly a cheap option, and believe me, it cost a lot more back when I did it too. For a while though, I did use an AT2020 as my main voiceover mic, which it did a fine job of, as it is a cardioid pattern microphone, and both microphones still get used to make two-person videos when George comes round to this day. So overall, I love these mics, but with more setup being required and a pretty hefty cost, I'd only recommend the XLR version for people who are willing to put some more time into their audio setup. The good news is though that there's a USB version of the AT2020, and from what I hear it's still a pretty awesome mic, with a lot less of the fuss. So after all of that we come to my final microphone, the one that I used today, and you're hearing it unprocessed right now. It's the Electro Voice RE20, which is just a total beast. It's truly professional standard, and it's amazing at eliminating background noise. The RE20 is a regular in radio stations, and has been used on TV and in music recording a lot down the years. And if I add some nice audio editing to it now, hopefully you can hear why. All of that awesomeness though does come at a very expensive price. It's not so bad in the US, retailing at around $435 on Amazon, but if you're in the UK like I am, you pretty much have to import it, and I ended up paying £413 for mine, which is just over $600 US. Alongside that you need an audio interface because this is an XLR microphone, and the price is just a massive barrier for a lot of people. If cost just isn't an issue for you though, firstly I'd like to say that I'm super jealous of you right now, and secondly that I could not recommend this mic more. 
It is absolutely superb. Everything you record on it sounds great, and it's packed with features such as an inbuilt pop filter, which removes a lot of pops even without an external filter, and variable D, which allows your voice to remain the same bass level no matter the distance you are away from the mic. Again, it's a cardioid pattern, making it perfect for YouTubers and streamers, and many high profile content creators do use it, such as Total Biscuit and Level Cap. The only slight drawback that I can think of is that it's slightly heavier than most microphones, and that could be a problem for some mic arms, but mine has held up absolutely fine so far, and it's one of the cheapest out there. Honestly, I love this microphone, and if you have the money spare, it is a great choice. So that's about it for today, thanks for watching. I hope that if you're a content creator, this video has helped you out in some way, and if you're not, I hope that you've still managed to find this interesting. If you did enjoy the video, I'd be very appreciative of a like down below, let me know your mic stories in the comments, and subscribe for more like this if you haven't already. Anyway, thanks for watching, I've been Nathan, and I'll see you next time.